Hello and welcome to Retech and today we're going to continue with our Acorn Electron videos and it's been a little bit unplanned. I wasn't really looking out to do this but as with these things they kind of fell into place. Now the Acorn Electron in my last video was one I've had for a very long time and you know it just needed a bit of TLC, keys needed cleaning up, a bit of isopropyl alcohol etc just to get any sort of residue off the keys, keyboard, key switches and so on and it's fine it works really well and I've been using it since just to kind of keep it running but it's kind of hard to rotate every machine that I've got to make sure that they're always 100% so you know that one got left behind a little bit. Now that machine has had bits that have been lost through time such as packaging boxes, manuals and all of that kind of stuff that went along with it. Now I was doing a bit of a kind of browse as you do on various websites and um, I came across this which is in this box here which is what we're going to cover today and you could probably guess it's another Acorn Electron but it's a complete new one or it appeared to be complete and new or newish in the box on the advert and um, I decided to take a bit of a chance because at the moment these are relatively cheap I mean the electrons never really seem to gain a massive amount of kind of aftermarket following retro following but they actually deserve to but because of the lack of following you know um, because mainly people look at Commodores and Sinclairs and you know units like that um, the Electron tends to get forgotten about and because of this um, their prices are fairly reasonable and it's nice to be able to get a good one and this is what we're going to look at today a hopefully good Electron I have not taken it out of the box all I've done is cut the tapes because I wasn't sure if that was what had arrived or not because I ordered a few bits and pieces and um, I've just left it as is so let's take a look at the Acorn Electron hopefully this is going to be as near to new as possible so let's take a look okay so here's the box here and basically as I said it's just had the tapes cut so we're just going to open it up and immediately we have a little bit of software and we have Spinx Adventure and Snapper and these are all Acorn soft products and you can see how they kind of evolve with the the, the list of titles kind of growing on each box and that was what was happening and we also have the likes of Boxer again very few titles on the box at this point and then we have Monsters which has a few more titles on the box there as the um, Acorn Soft catalogue started to grow and also Starship Command which again we're getting a few more titles that they're releasing for these and these look in very very good condition so it'd be nice to find out if these actually do work because it looks like that was the entire collection for this machine when this machine was new or purchased so um, yeah it might be that this machine is a very unused item but we're going to take a look so what we're going to do is we're going to take it out of the box and then we're just going to go from there so what I'll do is I'll remove the box and you'll see the inside or what's in the box on the desk rather than trying to manhandle it out in front of the camera. Okay so this is the Acorn Electron out of the cardboard box and um, it's complete in packaging it's got a little bit of damage here but nothing really to write home about and it's in fairly good condition as I spin it around and as you can see it's um, the usual 1980s fare and what I mean by that it's very dystopian how dystopian was the 1980s and was everything that everybody did with design I mean Sinclair were one of the biggest kind of feeders of the dystopian world um, and Acorn 
Well, kind of the same mindset, I'm guessing because Chris Curry and, you know, a lot of the people who worked for Acon as well were ex-Sinclair. And I think they may, may have had the same kind of mindset. Um, and, but when you look at it compared to a box on a Dragon 32, which was a Welsh machine, it was either a very plain Dragon 32 box with red dragons on it, or it basically said the family computer. Well, this says neither. This says we're all doomed, basically, on the box, if you look at it from this point of view. Um, you have the Rubik's Cube, very 1980s icon, and um, it was something that a lot of school kids had. I mean, in fact, most school kids had one of these, and, you know, you could see them everywhere on everybody's desk at school at one time or another. Um, you have a pencil stuck in the ground which is on fire on top of what looks like part of a chessboard. Um, yeah, very strange, very odd. Um, you also have what possibly is meant to represent silicon chips or something similar flying in the sky. Then you've also got two people not sure what they're doing under a massive jaw drill bank style radio telescope and it's all very bizarre and you have a massive wall in the background you know maybe it's um because a precursor to donald trump's wall that he wanted to build or it's um keeping everybody out from this part of the dystopian universe maybe maybe not not sure Stopwatch buried in the sand. Is that reference to the sands of time? Um, very odd, very odd. You've also got something that looks like the Parthenon or something out of Athens or even something as close to home as the monument in Penchor in Tyne and Weir, which is a very similar monument to this, which again was a bit of a folly. Maybe... Um, Maybe it's all reference to the early microcomputers being a little bit of a folly at times. I don't know. It's just very odd kind of imagery here with an acorn mug or what looks like an acorn mug and um, a massive feather. <laughs> really bizarre. And then we have the acorn electron at the bottom. Maybe this is kind of a picture window on a time before the acorn electron. You know, a time of darkness and a time of pre-technology and a time where mankind was not deemed good enough or technologically advanced enough. Um, maybe. Or maybe it's just some random dystopian imagery that just about everybody had in the 1980s and this seems to be it. Anyway we'll move on from the analysis of the marketing brains of the 1980s. It's all a bit weird now. So we look down to here on the bottom just below the um, Acon Electron we have a list of things that it's very good at. 32k of RAM, 32k of ROM, High quality TV output, yeah, not really, but you know, the RGB output on this was very good. It uses BBC Basic, identical to that used on the BBC Micro, yeah, kind of sort of, with um, a few emissions. Um, has a full size professional keyboard, and it does, that I agree with it. The keyboard is, as I said before, one of the nicer keyboards on any Micro. Outstanding colour graphics, yeah, kind of. Um, free introductory cassettes with example programs and a guide to basic and a programming course book. Um, but you could also get the expansion for units such as the interface one which bolted on the back and so on. So yeah, not too bad. So if we quickly sort of spin it around, oh, it's on its side. But you get the idea, it's basically it's school, Acorn Electron, it's home, doing your running your business, which actually looks like the inside of a office at Acorn. So they've just kind of used somebody's office there. Again, at home with the kids playing the games and at home with the younger kids learning or playing the games on it. So, you know, very, very rounded kind of thing there. But um, yeah, I just can't get over how 
dystopian everything was at the time so let's um let's have a look see what's in the box so i'm going to try and get it out so i might have to cut away because these are notoriously difficult to get out of the packaging and i really want to take my time because i don't want to tear it So we have a kind of white version of the 2001 Space Odyssey obelisk here. And there you go, that's your um, Acorn Electron packed up as if it came from the film set of 2001. But um, you know, it's quite good. It does have bottom clearly marked on here. And it's very squeaky polystyrene. It's not quite as aesthetically pleasing as Sinclair models with its embossed Sinclair logos on the top or on the packaging. But you know, it does its job. So anyway, in the box we have a very tightly packed machine really. Um, so we'll start with this, which is the introductory cassette um so that was in the package and that was mentioned which is quite nice it's still in one piece we also have the start programming with the acorn electron which is a nice addition but it's also got the the vendor's sticker on the bottom i wonder if they're still around john t miller in tyne and weir but you know it might be an idea to give them a try one day but it's it's all right it's full of very time consuming listings which i'm sure we all found very very interesting in the day and then we have the user guide which is the again been stickered up with the vendor on there and you know it just like every other acorn manual is very comprehensive and very well done okay so we have we should have a cassette lead which is what we have here followed by the power supply brick now i won't be using this initially because i haven't tested it but i must say it's still got its clear sticker on the top so it's never been taken off and they're quite beefy power hordes really because they run at 19 volts 14 watts yeah it's quite quite up there really when you think about a lot of the micros at the time run really at the board level that ran about five volts so it's got quite a beefy old power supply on there and then we have the electron itself and um, i must say it looks just about immaculate i think the vendor was quite right on this one in fact the keyboard feels like it's never really been used which possibly it hadn't other than kind of loading and saving or loading a game to be fair and it's even got the original edge connector protector on here as well just spin it around yeah it's um pretty much unmarked all the embossing on the back is nice and clear the white on the the serial numbers etc is still white very white there's no marks or wear on the rubber feet and yeah i'd say this was virtually unused i think it was um, probably used a few times and then put back in its box you know maybe it wasn't for them maybe they wanted a bbc micro and they were a little bit disappointed when um, they wound up with this on christmas day in 1983-84 so why did i buy it why did i buy this particular model well mainly because it's been decades since i've seen an electron in a box all packaged up correctly like this and um, it's a complete unit i don't have a complete acorn electron i have a well used battered and bruised acorn electron um so it would be nice to see if this one actually does work i have no doubts looking by its condition and um, to find out if it can actually load a game as well which is what we're going to do next but 
you back to my reasons. It's because I don't have one. I don't have a good working Acorn Electron that's been unopened, unmarked, is in pristine condition, not dirty or faded. This doesn't look like it's ever been out of the box. Um, and one where I can just use whenever I need to and not worry about it failing or not worry about it failing because it's been abused failing because of age possibly but you know one I can literally rely on if I want to use it on a daily weekly monthly yearly basis and that's the reason I ended up getting this Acorn Electron and also it's um local history to where I am anyway. That's because these were based in Cambridge and the amount of micros at the time that were based in and around Cambridge in the early 1980s was staggering. It was literally the center of the microcomputing universe really for a lot of people especially in Europe and the sheer number of machines kind of trumped just about everywhere else in the world that were being produced in one area. And in the UK at the time, I believe there was almost 600 microcomputers of varying models, makes from varying companies at the time, which was, you know, unheard of. Uh, and it's been unheard of since. So yeah, it's um, a little piece of history. So let's get this on the, on the bench let's um, see if it powers up with a standard cassette recorder and a, and a game i think i'll pick snapper because you know it's kind of an iconic game for one of these and we'll go from there so let's let's see if it does actually work so here we have a representation of the 1980s desk um this would have been a dream computer setup for a lot of people in the early 1980s. So basically I have the Acorn Electron, your cassette deck, a game, this time Snapper, your user guides, and also your how to program manual underneath, which is cool. And this would be the average kind of setup, especially when you start out with one of these microcomputers and then you start wondering what you can do with it. And I think the first thing that most people did was reach for a game to see what it could do. And this is what we're going to do. We're going to put Snapper on. This is an early Acon Electron cassette because it doesn't have the dual BBC tape set up like a lot of them did where they had BBC on one side and Electron on the other. Now and there you go as you can see it's starting to load in now. It'll take a few minutes so we'll just um, come back to it but while it's um, loading, it was very good in the way it handled its cassette routines. It was um, not that massively sensitive on volumes. As long as you had a decent quality cassette recorder, these machines would actually be okay. They weren't very finicky, there we go, in the same way the um, ZX Spectrum was with its volume. And a lot of other machines as well had the same issue. But the worst one of the day was almost certainly the Auric 1 and the Auric Atmos because their tape handling routines were appalling and they never actually got sorted out throughout the lifetime of the machine. But this um, Acorn, again, the build quality was really, really good once they got over their ULA problems, um, which meant that 1 in 10 original machines produced were f actually faulty. The ULA just didn't work and they were either being shipped out with um, faulty ULAs but I, I believe once they caught the problem um, they were only sending out working machines which was good but it kind of delayed things a lot and it kind of hobbled these machines a little bit as well and also these machines came out slightly too late to market because they came out at the time when most people who wanted a micro 
had already bought one the previous year and that was a problem and it was their own problem really it was a kind of problem of their own success because the uh, micro boom really sprinted off for about 24 months okay between 1981 really from the ZX81 kind of standpoint um, which was the first machine to kind of sell over a million units all the way through to the end of 1983 once the 1983 was over with most people had bought one they bought a shiny new machine but um a BBC, a Spectrum, a Commodore, and so on. So that left very little room the following year for um, people to want new machines. They could either buy a different machine, but only after 12 months of ownership. Ah, here we go, it works. But only after 12 months of ownership, um, there was no real incentive to go down that route. I mean, unless you were a die-hard microcomputer enthusiast. And that's when sales started to flag. And that's also when the um, Electron started to hit problems because people were moving on to something else for that Christmas period. The, um, the microcomputer boom was sort of over with and it was flat from that point onward. It wasn't to say that people were never going to buy micros but because of the volume of computers that were out there the amount of variations on the same kind of 8-bit theme it made people choices rather difficult and it kind of diluted the the market somewhat so you know unlike um other parts of the world where they had very few choices of micros um their home produced micros did very well or in the case of the auric one and the Auric Atmos, they did very, very well in other countries such as France, where there wasn't the competition. But the Electron was a British machine, really. It was to complement the BBC Micro, to complement your school machine, to complement the things you were learning at school for computer science and computer studies. So it kind of didn't do that well, but it was the best selling micro at one point. So we have um, Snapper here. It's not a bad clone of um, Pac-Man really. You have um, limitations of only having one channel sound. Uh, but you know, the ZX Spectrum wasn't far different at the time. And um, a lot of other micros had limited sound, so you know, comparing it to a Commodore 64 was never going to happen. But at the end of the day, it played most of the games that you would ever want to play on an 8 bit machine at the time, and it did very, very well. So, as far as a gaming machine was concerned it was relatively competent but the biggest issue was was the BBC micro because people were comparing this machine very unfavorably to a BBC micro and a BBC micro was a much more expensive machine much more capable machine and it was meant to be like that the electron was never meant to be a BBC micro it was a it was a entry level machine to allow you to do what you were doing at school as far as basic was concerned etc and it was a machine that was very well built and had a decent keyboard it wasn't cut down to a fashion like the zx spectrum was or the oracle one was and the reviews at the time didn't seem to get that um, they focused on its limitations in comparison to the bbc micro they should have compared it to other machines and it would have fared very very well because to be honest it's so much nicer machine than a Dragon 32 it's such a more rounded machine than a Aquarius it's such a more accomplished machine than the Auric one um, but people didn't see it like that they just saw it as a very slow very hobbled BBC Micro which was a shame because got quite a soft spot for the old elk and um, it should have done better than it did 
but it's again it's part of history and that's how things go so there you have it we have an almost pristine in fact i would say pristine <laughs> Acorn Electron, almost as new out of the box, and I'm very, very happy I've got hold of one. And that includes the software that came with it as well, and everything else that came in the box, because it's taken me a while to find a really nice one, and um, I'm glad it was as described, because you never know, you always take a chance. The Acorn Electron deserved more. It deserved a lot more than it actually got in the market. It deserved more recognition than people gave it and it deserved to do better than it did. But, you know, time, <laughs> time marches on and history kind of attends to itself, which is what this is. This is a piece of history, almost 40 years old. And f I, for one, I'm absolutely stacked that I got hold of one and it's gonna, hopefully be used a lot more than my original one which is still kind of up there on the shelf up there which um is serviceable does work but you know it's had a hard life so i'm glad i got hold of this but anyway so i hope you enjoyed this and i hope you enjoyed just following me as i unbox and test out a really pristine acorn electron a blast from the past okay so thanks for watching please subscribe please hit the like button if you liked it if not well you know you know what to do thanks a lot and i'll see you soon thanks bye bye